Denny Hamlin, driver of the number 11 FedEx Ground Toyota. Denny, talk a little bit about your run out there, specifically those last few laps. Uh, we overachieved a ton uh, today. Um, we, we really just had good pit strategy. The pit crew picked up spots here and there. And uh, you, know, you end up on the right lane here, here or there on each restart, and you find yourself in the top 10 and then in the top five at the end. So a lot of it, we got our car better um, and, and at least able to somewhat run with the, the leaders. But, you know, I think we definitely have some work to do. I think, um, you know, we didn't run as good as I hoped, but uh, we finished better than I imagined after about halfway of today's race. All right, we'll open it up for questions for Denny. Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. We'll start up here with Lee and Reed, and then we'll go to Mike. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Did you have any issues at all with your tires throughout the race that gave you concern? Uh, just that they weren't wearing at all. Um, the left sides have zero wear after a full fuel run. Um, typically, that's not supposed to happen. Um, but Are you aware the right front's blowing for something? Yeah, right fronts are going to blow. If the left sides have no grip, all the right has to carry the load. So until we get better tires on the left, the rights will continue to blow. Don't matter how hard you make them. Okay, we'll take our next question from Reed. Go ahead. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Um, could you talk about the move on the last lap, cutting the dog leg, and how tense a moment was it when you came back on the track realizing you were going to come up three wide there? Um, I wasn't concerned too much because we're as far down as I was, I, I was committed. There was nothing I was going to do that was going to back out. Uh, I just hoped that I would have slid in front of the 48, but you know, then you risk and punted and spun and your whole day you worked everything for uh, gets taken away in a corner. So you don't, you know, I, I held my line and, and really thought I did um, the right thing to give those guys still an opportunity to pass me back, and obviously one of them did. Okay, we'll take our next question from Mike, then go up to Bob. MikeHembreSpeed.com. Two things, Denny. Uh, how far ahead did you sort of plot that move on the apron there? Did you, did you, were you, that wasn't a last-minute thing, I'm thinking. And secondly, uh, Jimmy mentioned he had some problems with, with Carl's restart there. Any Does that bother you at all? It bothered me because I was behind Jimmy, and we were way too far back from the leader when we got to turn one. Um, I was I was thinking the whole time it was actually Jimmy's race to win. Uh, usually the guy who can get to the outside into turn one can can typically be the guy in the catbird seat off of turn two. And obviously Carl, with you know, whatever he did, I didn't even see it because I was so focused on Jimmy's back bumper that um, I, I don't I, I just know that Carl was way out there by the time we even got going. So um, I, he was the leader. He had the right to go anytime he wants, but. I didn't look and see when he went or if he went early or late or anything like that. But uh, I was plotting my move ever since I saw Jimmy and Brad side by side. I knew it was going to be interesting, at least for that lap, because Brad was driving in so hard, eventually he was going to slide up. And I knew he was going to slide up, and, and he did and open the door for me. Okay, we'll take our next question in the back from Bob. I'm Bob Potter, Sporting News. Um, were you concerned at all about your engine uh, today and also um, – you know, you talk about being difficult to pass, yet you kind of went from the back to, what, to third. So, I mean, do you feel that it was just all, you know, track position and having to really pick your spots um, carefully? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 hate, I hate to be Denny Downer, but I just didn't pass that many cards today. That's the realistic fact of it is you look and we started 40 something we finished third and you think that we just motored our way through the pack and that's just not the case uh, of what happened um I, i'm ecstatic about our finish don't get me wrong because we did not have a, a third place car day but my pit crew just kept putting me in a position to race those guys and then i capitalized when one or two guys in front of me makes a mistake here and there i get one more spot two more spots next thing you know i've got a shot to possibly maybe get a win at the end so um, those are what that's what you got to do when you uh, don't have uh, the best car and so yeah, it's just, it, was, it was a teamwork third place run today that's for sure okay we'll take a question up front. in the engine not really uh, uh, the drivers will not change any way that they drive um, to try to help reliability because if we do that then we're altering our chances to win and we're not going to do that <clears throat> go ahead with your question up front 
Hi, Gay Carmichael from uh, Speed Media. Um, my question is about the tires. I saw more tires go down this race than I have. Um, are you running different tires? Yeah, um, I, I think a, a little bit of it is uh, I did the, uh, a tire test here not too long ago, and um, <clears throat> you know we're, we're they're trying to get these green I guess tires uh, into the series and uh, and what it's doing is it's changing the entire comp uh, compounds and the way the tires are built and everything like that and it's just being it's a learning curve w wherever those tires every time those tires go on it just seems like passing is a little more difficult. And then it makes the right side tires blow typically because they're so hard on the left that uh, the rights just can't take all that pressure. Did you do any testing on them before this race? Uh, we spent a couple days tire testing, and I don't think we raced any of the tires we tested. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll take our next question from Jeff right here in the middle. Jeff Clef from USA Today. Um, obviously, you've never had a period in your career where you went 70 races without a win. Um, can you even imagine what that would be like to go that long and how no. we're wearing a driver? And no. I'd be <laughs> in the nut house after 50. Uh, you know, one, uh, I think in Pocono 09, it was like, I don't know, f maybe 50 or something for us. Uh, and it felt like an eternity. Uh, so it, it really sucks when you miss out on ones here and there and, and, and when you finally do get that win, it's, you know, I, obviously I was emotional for a lot of reasons that weekend, but uh, I'm sure it's, you know, it's a relief for someone like Carl that, you know, he's now relevant again. Uh, he, he really is, and, and it's, it's a good sign for their race team um, for things to come. When you, when you win really the first real race of 2013, uh, you got to feel pretty good about uh, your program. Okay, we'll take our next question right here from Terry. Terry Blunt, ESPN.com. In, in that regard, Danny, you, you certainly can relate to being a almost champion and then the next season having to struggle, which is exactly what happened to him last year. So you, you must be able to, to feel what it must feel like to him to finally be, uh, you know, winning finally again. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, – it's very similar. I mean, we struggled in 11. We won Phoenix in spring of 12. Same thing last year. He struggled. He won. So, and uh, we had a good year last year. And I, I suspect now, um, you know, looking at some of the other Roush cars, that he's, you know, the, their program has gotten better. And we've seen it. Uh, it's a cycle in our sport. No team that's uh, got any kind of depth um, stays down long. Everyone just keeps. It's almost the worse you run one year, the better you're going to be the next because it just pushes you to work that much harder. And I'm sure all those guys have done that. Okay, go ahead with our question, Stan. Yeah, Denny, next week is Las Vegas, totally different from Daytona and Phoenix. And then the weekend after that, you're at Bristol that's totally different from Las Vegas, Phoenix, mm -hmm. and Daytona. So how important is that extra day of practice going to be at Las Vegas, and how do you think you will approach Bristol? Um, it will help. I think that um, you know we had some practice cut. Obviously, with our engine failure uh, during practice, we had some practice cut out here, so we didn't get to run as much as we'd like. And we talking with Darren, he felt like we could have used that extra 30, 45 minutes that we missed um, to to possibly have run better. So having a full day at Las Vegas will be a big benefit. It'll give us everyone uh, a great opportunity to to get their cars right and see what it's like on a mile and a half because uh, really the closest thing I've run is, is Darlington tire test um, and you know everything seemed fine there uh, so it's uh, we'll see how it goes um, once it looks like the first five races are all something different so uh, you, you really have to get back with us after that okay we got a follow-up from Lee go ahead what did you think about that gift you got from NASCAR when they when Junior held back and they put him behind you and you got to move up a spot? It was a gift from Junior, really. Um, you know, he. Uh, I mean, it's just you got to maintain speed, and you know, I'm trying to be a nice guy and give him some room to kind of because I knew he was lunging forward and backward, cutting his car off, and so usually that. I don't know the etiquette is you try to 
give every, when everyone's in fuel save mode, you give a guy a little bit. But I mean, I was in nearly stop, so I had to pass him uh, because he had. I thought he had actually ran out of fuel at the time. So um, I guess NASCAR, once you get to a certain speed and you stall, then then uh, you're free game for anyone that goes around you. You were a little happy though, weren't you? I was I was happy. <laughs> <laughs>